Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, listen, before I get started, we had a sister that sent us a package a little while back. Um, I don't know, maybe several weeks ago. And this picture right here, this painting of little kittens where it was in the package. Um, and my wife told me, it's my fault, I have to admit, sis, my wife told me, don't lose the box. The address is on the box. Well, inadvertently, somehow, in my wonderful, um, ooh, what would you call it, uh, dedication on keeping all the cardboard in the recycle bin, uh, eventually I messed up and threw away the box that had the address. Uh, but my wife loves this, this painting here. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we do have a lot of cats. Uh, and not by choice. Uh, people tend to drop their cats off near where we live and they end up becoming residents. And one in particular that we can't seem to catch ever and get her spayed or neutered or whatever you call it, um, she keeps producing. And, uh, and we can't never seem to find homes because we live out in the middle of nowhere. So finding somebody that wants a little cat is very difficult. Um, not to mention, they tend to be wild. Uh, occasionally, I think the litter before the one we have now, we were able to uh, get them early enough where we were able to make them all very kind and loving. But then now the set that she had, which are about medium-sized cats now, uh, we got three left, and they're all wild. You can still touch them a little bit, but they and the cutest can be, but you just we have no way of finding a home for them. Love to find a home for that mother because uh, she again is going to have another litter, uh, another problem, and can't seem to put a stop to that. All right, now let's let's pass on from that idea there. Listen, I saw in the comments, and I've seen this so many times in the past, this scripture quoted when I was talking about or the last message I did concerning the law. And I'm going to quote this for you. I want to I want to quote this is from the book of Matthew chapter 5 specifically verse 17 to 19, more specifically 19. A lot of people look at this right here. And I've always been a little bit confused by it because what Jesus does after he quotes this is very shocking. So let's first read it. And then we're going to go really deep into this like never before. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Literally, that word is to complete. It's to complete it. Whether you look at it in the Hebrew Matthew, whether you look at it in the Greek, that is to, to complete. In which the word fulfill is kind of like the word complete anyway. There's about four different words in the Greek language that can be used for fulfill. And they also all have the same uh, meaning as complete as well. But he goes on to say, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them uh, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So either way, you make it to the kingdom of heaven, even if you uh, don't teach all of them or if you teach all of them and keep them all. You still make it, but one guy seems to have a greater elevation than the other. Now, but here's what troubles me. Let's read what it says in verse 19 again carefully. A lot of people like to quote this to me when I'm challenging the law. Whosoever there shall, therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Break it. Just not keep it. And shall teach men, notice that, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. All you got to do is break it or teach men one of these laws, totally break it, you know, or totally teach men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, that I have a problem with, and I'll tell you why. You might think, oh my God, Steve, I can't believe you have a problem with the Word of God. Well, only in the respect of this. Something's not right. All right? Because if you go down, now Jesus begins to teach the law. And right off, everything he teaches, he makes it worse than what the law claims. Now, he's not breaking it, 
but he's adding to it. All right? He's adding to it. Now, remember though, keep in mind verse 17. He didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill or literally to complete the law. Complete might carry a little different meaning because if you complete something, you're making sure it's in its full enforcement. But that's not the point I want to get at. And I'll go to the word complete here in a moment for you in the Greek so you can see that. All right, so he goes off. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Now he's actually added to the Torah or to the law. And he's made it stronger. Well, that wouldn't be that big of a deal. You might say, oh, what's wrong with that? You're right. Nothing wrong with that. You know, now, according to the Jewish people, they would have problems with it because they believe exactly what the law says is what you do. They don't want you to have it to be with a thought. Like in the case of adultery, if a man thinks in his heart lust after the woman, that she's guilty as well because they want to be able to get away with that and not be found guilty. But Jesus does make that law stronger, too. That's not where the problem comes in. The problem comes in because he's constantly, he's basically going in there. He's strengthening some of the laws. But one of these laws, he actually flatly overturns it. All right. See, whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. That's what the law says. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, commits adultery. Again, that law just got a heck of a lot stronger. All right? But you get down a little further. All right? Get past the swearing. You get to verse 33. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That, by the way, friends, is a Levitical law. It is a mitzvot. Okay? It is one of the laws... And Jesus just got through saying, all right, let's go back up. He just got through saying he's not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it or complete it. He said, Whereso, wheresoever, therefore, uh, who, excuse me, whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments, least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now Jesus is teaching you here. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's one of the least of the commandments. But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if a man will sue thee at the law, take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whom whoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh of thee, and from him that borroweth of thee, turn not thou away. There you go. There it is right there. Now, he has just taught you not to have an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, which is a Levitical law. It is one of the least of the laws, but he has taught you, you don't do that. Instead, you're to show mercy. You're to show much greater compassion. But according to his very words, whosoever shall teach man so, basically break one of these least commandments, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Do you think by one moment Jesus would be least in the kingdom of heaven? No, he's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I've always known this. I've always known this about that particular verse there. Okay? And th here's another one. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Right? 
There again, another Levitical law. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Totally opposite. One of those little least commandments is the opposite of what is commanded to do. So, what could be the problem? Well, I looked in the Greek language, and I couldn't really find a problem there. So then I turned to the Hebrew Matthew to see if there was something maybe I'm missing in the, maybe in the Hebrew Matthew that might shed a bit more light on this subject. All right? And so as I looked at the English version of it, it says, He who shall transgress one of one word of these commandments and shall teach others shall be called a vain person in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever upholds and teaches them shall be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. So I'm like, well, I guess it's the same until you begin to read it in the Hebrew. And you realize that the translators are just trying to keep status quo with the Greek. All right. Let's go back then, like I said, to verse 17. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I am, uh, I am came to annul the Torah, but to fulfill it. And this is when I first realized that the word was to complete it. Okay? Okay, he says... Don't think that I have, he tells to his students, it's literally his students, that, that he's come there to, uh, uh, you know, to, to annul the law. But I have came, la hafer Torah, ala tahashlim. Tahashlim is to complete, literally to complete the law. To complete it. If you're going to complete something, it could be missing some key things in, in that regards. That's the way I begin to, to think about it. Be'emet ani omer lachem ki od shemaim. Okay? Truly I said to you, till heaven and earth shall pass away. Not one ot. See, there you go. Ot. Echat. Not one ot. Or, or one dot. Or Actually, ot is a letter. Venukuda. Uh, Echat lo tapatil. All right, so not one jot, one one little tittle, whatever you want to call them, there would be abolished from the Torah or the prophets, because he goes on mehanavim shechakol yatakim until it will all be fulfilled. All right, now notice. Two different, completely dis different, distinct Hebrew words in chapter, or verse 17, excuse me, in verse 17, is hashlim, ala hash, la hashlim, that is to complete, okay? Because all will be takim, okay? All will be fulfilled. Then I got into verse 19. This is what really got interesting in Hebrew. As I began to read it in the Hebrew language, I immediately realized it wasn't saying what we're seeing in the English. Excuse me. Uh, Meha motzut, or or get my brain to work here for a minute. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I've got my mind so many different directions right now. Okay, uh, that mitzvot um, is what I'm trying to think, trying to say right here. Uh, let me let me start over again here. Ve'ashad yavor me'amar alef meha mitzvot. That caught my attention more than anything. Now the word chaval or the word able, we would say, it can have a different meaning. But if you have bin chaval in front of it, then you know it is the son of Abel. It can't be 
There can't be any other word whatsoever than that. Now, I'll give you an example here. Let me take you to this website right here. Ben Chaval, all right? And here you're going to have uh, years old or able. They got it in here. Son of Ben because of the Ben and able. But if you were to take off, if you take off the, 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 uh, the part of Ben and we just put in Haval, okay? Hey, Bet Lamed, and we enter it. Totally different word. Breath can be. Nonsense, it could be. Or vanity, it could be. But if it has been in front of it, there's no way you could have breath, you know, or, or, or nonsense or vanity, which is just vanity. Let's face it. You know, you're giving you some, some different uh, possibilities that it could be. It can't have that because the problem is, is in Hebrew, in the Hebrew Matthew, we have the bet all right, and I got to highlight it for you there. Bet nun, which is bin, havel. Okay? So I'm looking at this. Alamet acharim bin havel. So he said, he teaches others, he shall be called, basically, because it says, ashad alamet acharim bin havel. All right? Ikara melachot shemaim. So if he teaches others in heaven, he shall be called the son of Abel. That's how the sentence from right here, well, it doesn't want to highlight it properly for me. Okay. Ashar, Alamed, Achim, Chaval, Ben, Ikara. Trying to get a to highlight over here for you. It's not one, it doesn't want to really work like that on here. So I can't really do it that way. He shall be called, in heaven he shall be called, the son of Abel. Well, then I begin to say, okay, wait a minute. We really got to look at the way this should be translated. All right, the very first word, ve'ashar, okay, and he who, ya'avod, who, uh, who passes over from, uh, from, that could be from or, or, or um, with the mem in front of omer, the word omer is a saying. Okay, so and he who passes over one saying of from this from this mitzvot. Now, here's what's important. They just say the commandment, but you really have to pay attention here because in Hebrew, ha, the letter he in front of mitzvot is a specific commandment that he is giving. All right, so we have to kind of, let's, let's go back, even in the Greek. It's okay, let's go back and look at something here. And whosoever shall compel thee to go, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, we got to go back, way back up, sorry about that, get back up here to 19, 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. All right, now if he's going to fulfill, and then he says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled or be completed. And then he, we get this verse in 19 about if you break one of the least of the commandments and teach others to do so, you shall be called least. And then surely Jesus, two of them, we can clearly show you he is teaching that they're not the way they're written. You don't keep it that way. That's totally wrong, in other words. So what is he fulfilling? He's, he is literally not fulfilling, but completing what the commandments, the way they should be given to you. And it is obvious because even the ones about adultery, about divorce, and about um, uh, uh, death, killing, etc., all these are made stronger and greater than what Moses wrote. So he is truly completing the commandment in the way he's teaching this. All right, so when we come back to the Hebrew, and, and by the way, I know some people would say, oh, you can't be using the Hebrew Matthew because we don't know, that, that's, not a, that's not that old of a document. We do know from the early church fathers that Matthew wrote his gospel in the Hebrew language. Now, when it comes to the Greek or the Hebrew, we do not have originals. No, we don't. Clearly, we don't. The Greek is only a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. All right. 
about 400 years after it was written. We don't have any more current than that. So none of our Greek is really, we do we know, is it 100% accurate? We trust that it is. So as a researcher of biblical texts, what I try to do is take what we do have and compare it to make sense out of it. All right. So I'm not trying to change anything with the word of God, but I'm trying to make sense out of something because clearly Matthew writes in here, whosoever that shall shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Do we think Jesus is least in the kingdom of heaven when he comes down here and we have here on several occasions? You know, you have heard that it has been said, which is a Levitical law, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. And then he tells you to bless your enemies instead. Uh, or the one that you definitely cannot deny. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. That's in Levitical law. It is in the uh, writings of Moses. But I said to you that you resist not evil, but with whosoever shall you smite thee on, on the right cheek, turn to him all, the other also. In fact, Moses goes further, not just eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but limb for a limb. Right? You want it? Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up so you know what I'm talking about. Eye, tooth, and then he's going to say, and limb for limb. Exodus 21, 24. All right? And if any mischief follow them that shall give life for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And if a man smite the, smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his handmaid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out the man a ma, a man's servant's tooth or the maid servant's tooth, he shall let him go free for the tooth's sake. See, he goes all down through that. That's Levitical law, friends. You can't get around it. It might be one of the least of them, but that is Levitical law. Eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a limb for a limb, hand for a hand, even life for life is right there. Now, then we come over here and Jesus has just made everything much easier. See? See? You smite you on your right cheek, give him your other one. As soon as you have the law, give him your, all, all your clothes. For your coat, give him all the rest of your clothes as well. Compels you to go a mile, go with him two miles. All right? So, I have it clearly that he is doing something the opposite of what seems to be said in verse 19. And I know Jesus is not least in the kingdom of heaven, but it does say that he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets, but he said he's come, he's come to fulfill it or to complete it. So something has to be wrong. And so we're trying to find out what it is. So I look at another biblical document. And by the way, this Hebrew Matthew, this was kept by the Jewish people, the very Jewish people that definitely would not be in favor of saying something good for Jesus. But they'd kept the copy of the original Hebrew manuscript, passed it on down, copy after copy after copy after copy. So could there be mistakes in, in, in tribal uh, transcription over time? Sure there could be. But what we do is we take what we have and we really begin to examine it. So let's look at what it does say. So he actually says, Vasha ya avor me omar alef me mitzvot me ha mitzvot. That's so important. And he who passes over from one saying, one saying of of the law. Ha mitzvot. And literally, the way it's written there, he is literally saying to you right then and there, the in other words, what he's fixing to teach you. If you pass over from one of the sayings that I, you know, you pass over it, one of the mitzvot, which I will teach, that's what he actually says now. El abashar al med achrim. Okay, mitzvot, which I will teach others 
shall be called the son of Abel. What? Shall be called the son of Abel. Hmm. Malachot in the kingdom of heaven. So, he would be called the son of Abel in the kingdom of heaven. But then it gets even more interesting. Then he goes on to say, making sure I'm in the right place. Give me one second here. Vehamakim, Hamelamad, excuse me, Hamelomad, okay? And the sustainer, by the way, it's very interesting, very close to the word in, in 17. It's just a difference in the prefix that makes the difference in the way it, what it means there. The sustainer and Hamelamad Gadol. When you put the letter He in front of Melamad, the teacher, that is the teacher. So it's saying the sustainer and the great teacher. Will, will be called, will, will, excuse me, and the great teacher will call the praises of heaven. So now it carries a totally different meaning. It's no longer he... Uh, he who shall transgress one word of these of these commandments and shall teach others shall be called a vain person in the kingdom of heaven. No. Because he shall be called the son of Abel. And it literally it doesn't even say if he transgresses this it just says if, if he passes over from one saying, from the commandments, see, which I will teach. In other words, if he passes over from what, I, here's what's important. The me'amad is from the saying, me'amad. Okay. And he who, or that which, whoever, however you want to say that, who passes over from one of the sayings, and the commandments, which I will teach others, in the kingdom of heaven, he'll be called the son of Abel. It's basically it's almost like two different sentences right there at the beginning. It, in other words, let, let, me, let me put it to you like this. Let's go back over to the Greek for a moment. Let's look at it like this here. Um, if he passes over one of the sayings, what did Jesus say? This is why it's important for you to look at this here. You have heard that it has been said. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's a saying. All right? Even in, um, I think in the Greek, we would have it the same way. Let me just look at that real quick. Um, let's go back to, that's Matthew 5, and we're getting way down there around verse 30-something there. Um, again, you have heard that it hath been said. There we go right there. All right? Um, trying to see if it just uses the word command to make or say. There we go. The word say. All right. So there it is. There say. You have heard that it have been said. There we go again. 
Whoop, if I take my cursor off, you miss it there. You see right there at the bottom, command, make, say, speak. All right. So at the very beginning of the Hebrew right here, let's go back to the Hebrew side of that. What he says here in verse 19. All right. We're going to look right here at 19. Ve'ashad ya'avod me'omod aleph. There's the aleph, which is literally for the number one. That's the way of writing the number one. All right, now I cannot highlight for some reason that word right in front of it there. My cursor is right there over it. Me'amad, all right? All right, so that which passes over one saying, okay, then he speaks about the commandment Meha mitzvot alav ashar alamed achraim teachings. All right, and he shall be called in heaven. Excuse me, ikra melechot hashema. Excuse me, shemaim. He shall be called the son of Abel in heaven. So if if I understand this correctly, what he's saying in the Hebrew language, in other words, if you pass over one of the sayings, and the sayings are what we see further down, because he calls them sayings. You have heard it said of him of old time. Whoop, sorry, went too fast. You have heard that was said of those long ago. There it is right there. You have heard what was said of those long ago, right? But I say to you, swear, okay, you shall not swear by my name falsely, but you shall... Return to the Lord your oath, but I say, uh, but but I say to you, not to swear in vain in any matter, neither by heaven because it is God's the throne of God, nor by earth because it is a footstool of His feet. You see what I'm saying? When you begin to translate it correctly, then it makes more sense. If you take it from the Greek version of this, and you just simply put where it says up here in verse 19, whosoever therefore shall, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And then Jesus goes down and he takes and breaks every single one of them. Not that he's breaking it, but he's teaching it differently. All right, he's teaching it differently. In some cases, it's, it's, it would be greater. Like I said, in the case of adultery, the case of... Uh, of divorce, etc., those are more severe. So therefore, most people would not think that he's really teaching differently from the word, but just making it stronger. But in cases like the ones that I've just read you, the eye for the eye, a tooth for a tooth, he abolishes it. He's teaching you to abolish that commandment, which is the least commandment in Levitical law. All right? Then you had this other one that we just were, was looking at over here in the Hebrew, Matthew. You know, and that's the swearing. That's another one. You've heard it it's said of them of old time. See, the important part here is to focus on is the word said, because in the Hebrew part, in the Hebrew part is uh, uh, th those which pass over from one of the sayings. What is Jesus really saying here? If you would pass over from one of those sayings, in other words, if you would just pass over one of them, if you would stop doing that eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and have love and mercy and compassion in the kingdom of heaven, you shall be called the son of Abel, right? The righteous son of Abel who was not what? Why does it say a son of Abel? That's even fascinating. Why? Abel was not a murderer. You'd be called the son of Abel. Cain was the murderer. Cain wanted to kill everybody. Right? So Jesus said, if you'll just pass over one of those sayings, and then he says, Meha mitzvot alav ashar alama, excuse me, alamed achim, and the ones that I will teach, because that literally, alamed is I will teach others, you shall be called in heaven the son of Abel. So pass over one of the sayings. Just pass over one of those sayings that, that I'm fixing to teach you about. And you'll be called the son of Abel in heaven. And not only will you be called the son of he uh, Abel in heaven, but the sustainer and the great teacher will call in the praises of heaven. Because you showed mercy. Because you showed compassion. 
No wonder why James writes over here in his book, Jesus' own brother, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Fulfill the royal law. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You'd never kill. You'd never steal. You wouldn't covet his wife. None of those things. What a difference. What a difference it makes when we see the word of God in the correct context. Like I said, I'm not interested in trying to change anything, but to make sense out of something when it doesn't seem to make sense. Because like I said, truly Jesus is not the least in the kingdom of heaven. And you cannot argue the fact that he doesn't clearly take in there. And at least, especially with the eye for the eye and a tooth for a tooth. And, and clearly, um, you know, that was just totally changed completely. You know, there it is right there. Verse 38. And here it is again. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. That's another one. There you go. That's why he says, If you just pass over one of those sayings, and then the commandments which I will teach others, in heaven you will be called the son of Abel. But I send you love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. There's an, like I said, that's another one. Um, <laughs> so I hope this is a real blessing to you I really really do I, 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 it's a blessing to me without a doubt it's a blessing to me so we want to thank you for listening again today uh, and, I, and I really thank the person that actually posed that question or posted that scripture in there because you made me dive deep you know I, I, I get it believe me you know, and, and listen, you're God is not going to condemn you for keeping the law either. If you want to keep the law, you can choose to keep the law. But you will be held accountable for every word of the law. That's the difference with grace. That's the difference, not just with grace. That's the difference for when you take Christ as your husband, you cannot be married to the law in the law of love. You know, as Jesus said to the rich young ruler when he came to him and he said, Master, what must I do to receive eternal life? He said, Thou knowest the commandments. And he never mentioned Levitical commandments either. He only mentioned the ten. He began to name them off. You know, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind, etc. He goes into that right there. And he says, But Master, I've done these since my youth. Well, he had kept the ten commandments, but he still felt like he was missing something. Jesus said to him, go and sell everything that you have and give it unto the poor. Then you will have life. And that was too hard for him. Anyway, if it's a blessing to you, God lays upon your heart, you want to support the work we do. We thank you for it. Our address, uh, Danoon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Or you can click right there and you can donate online. Uh, again, we'll be writing letters again to thank those that have been kind enough to help us out. Your support is what makes this so possible. And we thank you. And again, thank you, sister, that sent this beautiful painting. Uh, we really did love that. It was so kind of you to do so. And my sincere apology for, not, uh, for throwing away the box with the address. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with his